Um, my name's uh, Chris, uh, and I'm based in uh, I'm based in Montreal. Um, and I'm going to be hanging out here in the chat, answering any questions that you might have. Um, and Damien is our amazing presenter, and I'm going to hand off over to him. Awesome, thank you. Um, my name is Damien, as uh, as Chris kindly introduced me. So I'm just turning on a light here for myself, and you know we're super excited to be able to share with you some Windows 10 tips and tricks, um, and you know. Just kind of a, a little reminder here is that we we will be recording this session today. It's already been recording this whole time, actually. So if you aren't very comfortable with uh, having your camera on or mic off or things like that, it's kind of a little fair warning. But also what that means is that uh, you can always return back to this. So once the recording becomes available, you can rewatch it, pause it. Uh, if there's something cool you missed or anything like that, then uh, absolutely it is up to you to uh, be able to revisit that. So. Uh, don't worry if you haven't uh, if uh, if you've missed out on something. Also, I did forget to mention this link that I have uh, have up on the screen here is the link to the entire deck that I'm currently presenting off of, and it is made available for all of you. So what that means is that you will all be able to um, take that link, follow along with me. You have it for keeps as well. So if you wanted to save a copy and then just kind of work from there, then you can definitely. Uh, have a hold of what we will be talking about today. So um, maybe we'll put that in the chat as well. But as a quick uh, reintroduction, my name is Damien. I'm based in Mississauga, Ontario, uh, which is on Treaty 13A. And uh, currently I'm presenting out of Belleville, Ontario. So it's a little bit of a, of a drive out, but otherwise, uh, otherwise we're having fun. We do a lot of trainings like this, and I'm super excited to be here with you. And Chris, I'll let you reintroduce yourself. Thanks. So I'm Chris. I'm based just outside of Montreal. Um, I'm on the unceded lands of the Ganekahagi people. Um, so I learned something new yesterday. So some lands don't have a treaty, uh, and those lands are unceded. So they were essentially stolen. Um, so the lands that I'm on are the unceded lands of the Ganekahagi. Um, and again, I'm super excited to be here, and hopefully I'm going to learn some stuff from Damien too. Awesome. And on that topic of, you know, treaties and lands, I do want to take the moment to uh, acknowledge the lands from which I'm presenting off and uh, where we all are currently settled as well. Um, I will make some more of my piece on Mississauga since that's where I live. Um, but parts of the Mississauga, which, as we mentioned, are in Treaty 13A, are actually, as a little as a little fact, we're part of a, a bigger territory called the Dish with One Spoon. And so what that meant is essentially it was the dish which represented the land, which was meant to be shared the resources peacefully and equally um, with everyone. And the spoon meant to be all the different um, peoples that were there cooperating together uh, in a mutual fashion for those resources. So there wasn't violence or there wasn't anything. It was all for the greater good. And the reason why I find that really important is because I find that that kind of mentality could be very applicable in modern struggles such as climate change and things like that. And so if you'd like to learn a little bit more about the lands you're from and maybe some more history, I highly recommend you to go to native-land.ca. There's a great little chart there that you're able to discover a little bit more and be able to um, learn from, from our history. So big thank you to Cobblestone Collective for uh, piecing this workshop together. Um, you know, we're super fortunate to be here. It's run by three amazing women. And uh, I'm, I'm really happy that we're able to provide this for all of you. And on the topic of thanking, let's also thank Microsoft Education Canada for uh, supporting this workshop, this workshop as well and making it available for all of you. The kind of agenda for today, it's pretty simple. We're just going to, when I say overview, it's kind of what we're doing now, just a little introduction, maybe give a brief uh, a brief idea of what is happening in Windows or what it, what Windows 10 might look like if some of us are unfamiliar or potentially just switched over. We're going to break this uh, session up into two parts. The first half, we'll just do tips and tricks, literally small bits and pieces of, hey, this is something you can do. And I encourage all of you to follow along and try it as well. So I'll try to leave some time for all of us to be able to test out that feature or to start familiarizing ourselves with it since if we're all using Windows 10, hopefully <laughs> being in the session, then we can do that. 
And then the second half, we'll be covering whiteboards. It's a great collaborative, uh, you know, Windows 10 application that is synced with, you know, your your, your office. And so, uh, super super phenomenal trick that we can use for our day to day work. And lastly, there's a certification that we will give to acknowledge all of you and to thank you for the time you're spending. So we will give you a code that you can use up for a badge, and that will show you how you can redeem that badge as well for your own purposes. So super excited to be doing that. And I think on that front, if you're following along in the in the PowerPoint presentation, we are on this tips and tricks, and I think we can just kind of dive right in and get started. So. That's nah, OK. I'll just minimize that. OK, so here we are in Windows 10, right? I, I tried to make it a little bit nostalgic. This is the if you just reset your your PC or started it up or never bothered to change your background. This is kind of the background. It's uh, you know, as, as, as clear and crystal as it can be. Now, for some of us who might be a little bit unfamiliar with Windows 10 or maybe we transitioned over from Windows 7, I know that was discontinued officially two years ago, I believe in January, but sometimes uh, some rollouts are slow or uh, we miss certain things, right? And one of the things that we might've missed is the biggest change is the start menu, right? So when we went to the bottom left corner, there was a start menu, we clicked it, it listed all kind of your basic functions in a row, and then you could have uh, expanded on that to go more because now we have the Windows start. And so when I click that, we have different tiles that we can customize, expand, and all of your apps are shown in this kind of list right here. So it is a bit of a, of a different experience, right? But what we're also able to do is uh, something very simple, right? Generally, we go, we left click on the Windows logo at the bottom left, and then we, we uh, open up this kind of view. But instead of left clicking, we can just go ahead and right click. And this kind of brings back that initial Windows 7 or older feel of you have your general start menu. And so this could be a huge time saver. For example, one of my uh, most useful places that I always tend to forget and like to go to is the system, right? And because inside of the system, we actually see the details of our, com our computer. So for example, if, you know, let's say there's a problem with it, maybe we're talking to IT or maybe we're potentially shopping for a new PC, but we don't know what we're using right now. This is where you can find some of that information. And we won't go into details explaining i7s and you know RAM and things like that. But if you do happen to ever visit like a Best Buy or any kind of shopping catalog, that that is how PCs are coordinated with their uh, with their identification that way. So you can kind of get a sense if someone's ever asking you what you're using right from here. Additionally, some of uh, our favorite tools could be Task Manager, right? And Task Manager. For anyone that is uh, a little bit more familiar with keyboard codes is control alt delete which then grays out your whole screen you get um kind of like five options there and then you click it and it opens it up but instead of doing that we can just right click on the start menu and just open task manager right from there and so generally if something is slowing our computer down like i can select slack for example and just end that task and that way uh, my cpu should decrease a little bit so that's a pretty, <laughs> that was actually a lot. Um, but on that, uh, on that note, that is how you can kind of easily go ahead and uh, quickly manage your, your start menu. So if you are trying it out uh, at home, it's again, super simple. You can just right click and there you go. On the topic of just layout. So we were on the left-hand side here. Um, some of us, if you've never really configured your, your task bar, which is the big bar at the bottom, mine's very cluttered, but I'm okay. Like I, I prefer like that because I have everything all in one spot, but I have this type here to search and not everybody might have that, right? I find it very useful because we can just go ahead and like, you know, we'll talk about startup apps later, but uh, we can type in exactly what we're looking for and it'll jump us to that part of the settings. If you don't have something like that, all you need to do is find an empty space on your taskbar, right click on it. Oh, I clicked on uh, sticky notes there. And then uh, let's see, it should be in the, in the search. So if you hover over search, 
and select search show search box, that's when this will come up over here. So just a few nitty gritty things, but again, this has been a life changer for me personally, and I think that it can definitely help uh, expand and change the way that some of you might be able to work as well. On that note, let's continue to move over and shift over to the right side of the screen. So we talked about the Windows Start menu, search bar, and all the other you know, things that you can find in taskbar. But we also have an action center right over here. And so that is this right kind of text looking like a, like a text message looking icon in the right hand corner at the bottom right. So what this adds is I can manage notifications so we can just see a nice little conversation that I was having with, uh, you know, with, uh, with Chris there. I've got some Ikea stuff happening, cool. Anyhow, so I see these notifications up here and I can choose to manage them if I so chose to. But also what is great is over here, I have the ability to do almost these quick settings. So if, for example, your brightness isn't uh, on an adaptive scale, we can quickly change that brightness level with this slider scale right here. Uh, another important thing with a virtual work is maybe some of us have begun using multiple monitors. And multiple monitors, right, when you plug it in the first time, generally it duplicates your screen. So whatever you're doing on your main computer, you're doing again on the other monitor. And so you're just getting a, a mirrored version. But the way you can change that is by simply heading over to the project, um, the project button there, and then just extending it. So it becomes an attachment of your current monitor, right? So that's a very simple way without trying to hunt down the settings and, and you know, uh, figuring out exactly what way to, to customize that. You can also, if you do have a wireless display adapter, you can connect to that here. That way there isn't like an actual docking station or um, any cables that you might use. But navigating back to the action center, there is also a connect feature. So if you wanted to very quickly uh, search for different uh, devices that you wanted to connect to virtually. So for example, my buds, I don't want to find the settings in the Bluetooth area. Once it sees that it's online or active, I can go ahead and connect it right from here. So some of these ease of access areas designed in Windows 10 is to just help make your day-to-day -day life a little bit easier and a little bit better, right? But there's also some well-being options in this action center as well, such as nightlight. So if some of us never heard about light, light, nightlight, um, essentially, a little bit of science uh, uh, science dropped is that we have a natural level of melatonin in our bodies and systems, but with the blue light that's being emitted from the constant screens in our day-to-day -day lives, then that might re that might drastically reduce, especially for using uh, screens late at night, which is why you know we hear a lot of recommendations about uh, about you know not using uh, you know screens before bed or try to read or have some like uh, time off. So by turning on nightlight, I have a quick setting where it starts diminishing or dimming the actual blue light that's being emitted and thus helping ensure that I have uh, as much melatonin as possible to help me fall asleep. Now, again, this isn't medical. <laughs> I, I'm not diagnosing anything or things like that, but it's just something that could help a little bit in the future. I'm also wearing those glasses as well. But speaking on nightlight is we... We chatted a bit about this search feature, search feature, and truthfully, I just kind of brushed over it, right? I just kind of said, well, you know, you can type here to search and that's it, it'll take you right to the settings. But we can customize that nightlight a little bit more. So if I just typed in, I have to click in there first. If we just typed in night, I didn't even finish the sentence, but it, it's automatically popping up as the best match for nightlight. And I click enter, it takes me immediately to uh, the actual settings of Nightlight. So this is applicable in everything in Windows 10. So if you're trying to change something and you kind of have an idea, right? Or maybe you want to set up a printer and, uh, and you don't know where to find that, you can just you know go to the search bar, type in printer, and, and it's already coming up. And I can go to the printers and scanners there. But going back to Nightlight is you can adjust the strength over here just a little bit. So uh, I have it pretty high. I, well, hi, it's halfway, it's 53. But you can go all the way to 100. You'll have zero kind of blue light emissions there, and it'll all just be like a red-green hue. Um, a little uncomfortable for me, but for all of us, we can also schedule 
that as well. So right from here. Cool, so now that we discussed that a little bit, we'll return to that search bar in just a second. But before we completely move away from this right-hand corner, right, where we saw the action center, there is actually something called a minimize button. So I'm not sure, I'll try to describe uh, a situation. If you relate to that, that's, that's great, maybe. Uh, if you don't, that maybe one day you'll come across that. But if you have multiple tabs open, right? So if you're working on a project and you needed to open up another browser to research something, you needed to open up another application or maybe Teams to chat something up and you start minimizing the first, you know, the, the active thing you're working on, only to having to minimize the next four applications because you had them all opened up behind each other. If the goal was to get to the desktop, there's a shortcut that you can apply for that. So let's go ahead. I'm going to open up some, uh, some applications here. We got some Word. We got some Excel. Uh, let's do a PowerPoint as well. That's my PowerPoint. So let's do um, another PowerPoint. There we go. I think it opened up, maybe not. But essentially, I have those two. There it is, blank new. So I've got uh, a couple of things. So I'm going to open them right back up. That, that, and this is the one I wanted to open up. Design ideas, that's not for today. That's for another day. And now I have multiple things open. What I can do is it's kind of hidden, and it's very hard to, to see. But there is actually a small line in the bottom right-hand corner. And if we push our cursor past that line, just basically shove it right down to the bottom right corner, there's actually a button there and I can minimize everything. So it takes every, that, everything that is open, it minimizes it and provides me kind of a fresh start inside of my uh, inside of my desktop. And then I can kind of reconvene from there or reorient myself and pick up where I left off. So as a reminder, I just took my cursor, put it all the way to, uh, all the way to Action Center, take it even more further to the right past that, to the bottom right hand corner, and when I click that, everything kind of moves down. So that's how you can essentially eliminate everything um, without a uh, without a care. Now, on that note, is there's another way to also remove everything in the background except for the application you're currently working on. So let me try to mimic something like this, right? Where I have uh, I have Excel, I have Word over here, and I'm going to open up a PowerPoint as well, minimize that. So I've got an overlay of things happening, right? If I wanted to stay on my Excel doc or application, but I wanted to get rid of everything else, I wanted to get rid of the PowerPoint, I wanted to get rid of this Word and things like that, I'm going to grab onto the bar where there's nothing, like uh, nothing, nothing I can interact with. So um, this empty green bar over here so that I can move, and I'm just going to try to shake it. And by shaking it, I'm able to eliminate everything in the background while still maintaining what I currently have, right? And so I, if I shook it again, let's say I made a mistake, then it reverts everything back to its original kind of format. So another two kind of ways that we can leverage, you know, uh, maybe overburdening or anxiety, things like that, eliminate it all and just keep what's important to us or start fresh and kind of pick up from there. Cool. Now, again, if there's any questions, feel free to type in the chat. Chris is monitoring over there, and so he'll be able to interrupt me or ask anything. Should uh... Hey, Damien. Yeah. I have, uh, I have a little tip. So you have a, do you have a touch screen? I do. So if you swipe from the right-hand side of your screen, it opens up that same uh, note. It opens up the little notification thing. So if you're using a touch screen device, you don't even have to go down there. You can just swipe from the side. Um, your little thing opens right up. That is awesome. Thanks for that. I totally You're forgot that that's the thing as well. <laughs> so great for any of us that are using some touchscreen devices too, which is awesome. Now, um, if we are on the topic of multitasking, right? If we are doing a couple things at one time, there's actually a very handy snap feature inside of Windows that works on whether it's your, your primary computer, whether you attach it to a different monitor, 
just be mindful of where that monitor, you know, where you have to move to access that second monitor. But what I can do is let's say I want to take this Excel and I want to put it on the left hand side and then select my Word document to open up on the right hand side. All I need to do is in the same spot that I click and held the Excel uh, in the bar at, at the top, I'm going to click and hold that. And I'm just going to just push it right to the side. And perhaps we can notice almost like a ghostly uh, figure that is outlining where it will go. So it will show up on the left hand side there. I'm going to select the right uh, or any any application I want to open up and it will populate the right hand side of the screen automatically. So if we are multitasking, whether we're using teams or you know taking notes or anything like that, then we can kind of pop two things at one time and then maybe there's a slide deck that's being presented and we want to take our notes uh, right beside the, the slide. That's one way that we can customize that. So all we need to do, I'll try to do that again. I'm going to open that up, is take any application, click and hold in, in any bar at the top that isn't populated, and then just slam it into the side. And this is already pre-done, so that's why it just fit right back where it was. But if it wasn't, uh, as we saw the first time, uh, you know, in that kind of scenario, then we would have a uh, everything that's open and then go ahead and open that up. Hey, Damien, I have a question for you. So I actually use this feature myself, but I find it a little hit and miss as to whether it actually will resize those windows. Like I find it will do one side and then the other side like ends up as a hot mess. Like it's do you have any tips on like how to get it to work every time or like um I, I'm, I'm, if, if you have something, then definitely share it out. I think in my experience, it depends on the application. So partly it is the knowledge you build with applications. So for example, Teams doesn't do a, a perfect middle cut. It will always kind of extend past that, that middle area. So being mindful of Teams will over arch and then you have a smaller right hand. At that point, you can you can always uh, adjust the setting, right? So if I wanted a bigger Excel than a smaller Word, then you can always readjust that. Or if, if that happens, right, and, and your Teams is a bit bigger, you can move it back to the middle. Um, so that's, yeah, that's yeah. like that's really awesome piece of advice because like I I find like in uh, Chrome like sometimes like it will shift it all like you get this tiny little section and then I'm trying to get like two even sections and I can't do it. So I'm sure people are going to run into into those issues. But like this is one of my favorite features, so awesome. Yeah, and, and and on the topic of like tip giving as well, I guess is if you're doing this on the monitor that you're extending to, um, okay. Again, that's why I said you have to be mindful of where you know where that border is, right? So it won't work if if my monitor is on my left hand side, and I'm trying to you know slam the application on the left hand side, it won't. It's gonna transfer over to the monitor, right? So being mindful of that. And maybe starting starting it on the left hand side of the left monitor and then moving towards the right is another tip you can try as well instead of you know working from right to left. Cool. So uh, with that being said, we'll talk a little bit about startup apps, right? So uh, something I see pretty frequently is you know over time computers slow down, and this is very common if you have a hard drive in your computer. If you have an SSD. This problem might not be as frequent, but if you have a hard drive in your computer, a little technical background, the fan starts you know, slowing down its spin and slows down. But there's a few things, especially when you're booting up your PC that you can do to not have it be as slow, right? Because especially when you're powering up a PC from a deep sleep, it has to run a lot of processing power uh, on applications that have decided when you installed them, whether you knew it or not, that they are priority and need to open up first thing. So what you can do in that case is going to our search bar at the bottom, typing startup, and we're gonna go to startup apps. And from here, we are able to, some of them have an impact that's measured, some of them aren't used enough in order to, to measure it. But from here, we can turn on and off different applications that have deemed themselves important enough to start immediately when your computer is starting up as well, which is why you know, it might take five minutes to load everything up or anything like that. So 
I can, you know, either look for something that is completely uh, high. I think the the Samsung Dex over here, that's a pretty high impact, and I want to, you know, speed up my my startup, my boot up. So I'm going to just turn that off. It's just a quick toggle. Uh, maybe Spotify. I don't use it every time. I usually just use it when I start working on something. So I'm going to turn that off as well. And so different things like that will be able to help your your boot up time a little bit faster and maybe not be as, as slow when you are uh, consistently using it like that. All right, so uh, since we are working with administrative professionals, I wanted to kind of make this a, uh, a cool little feature or bring this in. And it's gonna sound potentially silly at first, bear with me. I wanna show you calculator, okay? Um, Maybe we're using calculator on uh, on you know our phone or an actual physical calculator beside us, as we might be doing like um, you know any kind of accounting or documenting or calculating. Um, but one problem I've consistently found, and I only recently learned about this, is that if I'm trying to calculate something, let's say I open up my Word, I have to keep shifting back and forth between the calculator and the Word, right? When I want to calculate something and then type it in, and then you know, go back and forth like that. But we can actually minimize this by on the calculator where we see the word standard, there is this uh, this little keep on top button. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that and it moved to the top right corner. We can move it anywhere we want, truthfully, but it moved there. And now what's gonna happen is when I open up that word again, it's staying on top of the application. So I can go ahead and type out, go back and start calculating whatever I need to and then revert back to my document and everything is in one place. So we're eliminating the need of going back and forth and closing and opening applications again by just having this consistent calculator on the screen. Now I'm gonna turn that off for now, we're gonna minimize Word, but the calculator function has a lot of measurements built into it as well. So in the hamburger menu, which is just the standard three lines of a menu that you can see, we can see uh, or observe, you know, a scientific calculator. So if I click that, I get a few more different functions. Uh, we can switch over for a coding kind of calculator. I don't know enough about coding to really, you know, go forward with that, but it, it, it's there and it's pretty cool. We also have converters. So if maybe we're dealing with uh, an international student of sorts or someone new who's coming in, basically, because Canada is such a weird hybrid of the way that we calculate, you know, kilometers or you know, pounds and things like that. This is a pretty cool way to be able to quickly measure between those and have that conversion in place. So if I do five pounds, that's 2.26 kilos, right? So all of that is built right into the calculator, which is super cool. Okay, now we're on the last kind of leg of, uh, or we're on the last trip of our tips and tricks, and then we'll, we'll dive into, into whiteboard. But what is, and I'll, I'll kind of just pose this question out there, uh, what is probably one of the most, uh, you know, important or, or popular features using uh, commands, right? It's control C, control V. So copy and pasting, right? So we love to be able to take something, take the whole content and put it in. But the downfall of that is that we can only do it one at a time, right? So if I go ahead and copy something and then I paste it, then I have to do that in, in row because if I copy something else, it will overwrite that. So there's actually a solution to that. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is uh, let's open up browser. I'll just type in astronomy, something something quick. We'll go to Wikipedia. Sorry, just for you know quick uh, quick demo. And I'm going to go ahead and select all of this, and I'm do Control C, or I'll do uh, Select, right click, and copy. So I am right now copying a variety of things in a row. And if you know it, as I explained, generally this would be overriding each other. So if I wanted to add all, copy the first paragraph, it would have been overridden three times. But there's a cool feature, which is called Windows key V. And what that allows us to do is open up a clipboard and paste numerous things at one time. So if this is the first time you're doing this, this uh, you know, Windows key V, it will just ask you to toggle it on. But once I do that, I have my clipboard here and I just need to go ahead and click that and that's pasted. The next one is in there. I'm gonna enter and 
everything that I did is now being able to copy and paste. So again, really kind of great if we are looking to, to get a large piece of information or multiple things at once, have that in one spot, and then save the time of, again, switching back and forth between applications in that way. Inside the clipboard, each item has an ellipsis. Um, so basically, you can either delete a specific, uh, a specific copied item, we can pin it so that until you unpin it, it always remains there, or we can clear all and start fresh from our clipboard. So that is that. And then also, uh, if you are looking for something to you know, screenshot, right? And we wanna capture something, or maybe we've been in like a recording and like, oh, that slide looks really cool. I need to quickly get that before you know, it's, it's gone. If you remember the Windows key, plus shift plus s that opens up your screen snipping and so essentially you're able to click those three keys and then drag across the screen what you want to snip and boom it's already there so you don't have to type in or open up uh, manually you know uh, the full screen snip and, and kind of work through that especially if the slides aren't staying on for long cool so actually i'm not going to close that yet now, there is a neat feature if you are, for example, presenting or want to quickly uh, access something else. It's called the Alt tab. So when I click Alt tab, then basically I'm able to cycle between everything that is open. So I can go ahead and just keep on clicking tab at this point and open up maybe Excel, right? That is a, again, pretty great feature, especially if you are on a presenting slide or, or a presentation or you just want to kind of like work on that. Now, if you are using a uh, laptop or any portable device, the trackpad actually has a ton of cool features. And I included a photo of it in the deck. I'm actually just gonna pull it up though, just so we can see that uh, right over here. So there's a really great photo that essentially tells you the different gestures that you can use in order to maximize your trackpad. Some of these, might you know you might have been used to like scrolling which you have to pinch and zoom outward or inward sorry to zoom in um if you do want to scroll two fingers up and down but then there's things like uh like multitasking so that exact same feature with the alt tab you can just use three fingers instead and then move around in that sense or if i click with three fingers it opens up the search bar and ready to type so if you're not privy to using a mouse or anything like that then essentially it is a pretty nifty way, especially if you're on the go or working on your lap in a commuting, anything like that, to be able to have very quick commands at your fingertips, literally. Cool, one last thing, and then we'll switch over to, to the last part of our journey here. But there is something called a task view button. And so within task view, there's two features that we're gonna go over. If you don't see task view, the same way that I described how we can get this search bar, we're gonna right click on any empty you know, task bar spot and the task view is right over here, show task view button. So it's checked off for me and it's beside the Cortana if you have that, otherwise it would be beside the search bar. So when I click on task view, we're gonna see a timeline. And so I, I hope that's presenting, but this timeline essentially allows us to uh, be able to quickly go back into a document that we're working on and be able to, to choose that. So it, if, and if you turn it on, you can sync it across devices. So if you're working on like a home computer, uploaded your document to the cloud, and now you're at work and on the work computer, you can still pick up where you left off just through that timeline. So it's a, it, it sees exactly what you're working on within the past 30 days. Within the task view as well, we can open up virtual desktops. So when I click on that in the top, uh, you can see new desktop. So when I click on new desktop, essentially, uh, and, and Chris, can you confirm that you can still see what I'm showing? Yep. Yep, all right, cool, thanks. I, I just, I lost my little border there, so I just wanted to, to make sure. But this, uh, this plus new desktop allows us to create virtual desktops. And so what that means is that if we, let's say, want to divvy up our different types of work. So if I'm working on school related things, right? If I'm taking some studies or classes, but I also have to work on some of the job, 
I can separate that by creating a new desktop. And then now I can move things around into those two desktops. So by clicking the task view, I'm currently in desktop two and I don't have anything open. But if I click on desktop one, or I did have things open, maybe I want to move this PowerPoint presentation away. I just drag it into desktop two and that's where it's found. So that's kind of a, a great way that we're able to go ahead and uh, leverage virtual desktops to be able to, you know, organize our work, maybe work at different things at a different interval, or if you're planning and didn't want to lose your progress, or you're about to share your screen just like me right now, and you didn't want to showcase some things, you can hide them away inside of a different desktop like that. Okay, I'm going to take a quick breather here, a quick pause. If there are any questions, please let us know. If not, we're going to dive right into whiteboard. Is there a way to label those desktops? That's a pretty good question. I've never actually tried. Um, yes, oh, there is. How did you do that? I just tried. I couldn't do that. I, I clicked. I left clicked on where it says desktop one or desktop two. No, it just two. opens the desktop for me. Huh. I, I'm not sure. I just, yeah, I clicked it and uh, and, and it, it worked for me to, to change it. So, mm. personal. Well, we'll take a look at that. But yeah, I, I literally just learned that right now. So <laughs> that's, uh, that's pretty cool. That is cool. I okay. now have managed to move everything off my desktop and now can't find anything. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, if you're if you're trying that at home, let us know if it worked for you or or anything like that. But with that being said, let's dive into Whiteboard. And Whiteboard is such an amazing tool. Um, you can do so much, you know, collaborative work. You can do a lot of great note taking, personal things like that. And it's very intuitive with many devices that you might use. So. You might have to install it first from the Microsoft Store. It's just the App Store for your Windows 10 PC. And once you do, or once you open up the store, just type in Microsoft Whiteboard and install it onto your account there. If it is already install, installed, you can just type in, uh, well, I should have typed in Whiteboard, not Microsoft. But if I type in Whiteboard, it will pop up here, and then I can just click on that. If you logged out or there's like a change, and so you have to be logged in. Right, so I would, I would recommend you logging into whatever account you want to use it, whether it's like a personal account, whether it's your, your work account. But if there's a change in login or anything like that, it will prompt and require you to re-log in. And sometimes, if let's say it's not working, you're okay, so you're just better off to uninstall and reinstall again. So just like as a little tip for there. But now that we're inside Whiteboard, uh, I noticed that here I, I can sign out or switch between accounts. I can invite people to collaborate with me. So if I clicked on that invite, it is suggesting different people inside of my organization, assuming you logged in with the organization, to uh, to invite. So I can you know select Cara and send that invite out. It also has a right to search. So if you have an active pen, and I'll showcase some pen features because I'll, I'll use a Surface Pen right now. But if you have a pen, you can either write to search someone's name. If you don't have a pen and you know you want to type something out, but you can't. Uh, right right here beside the EN, the English, uh, we can switch over to text mode. There's a little keyboard icon. So when I click that, I can just type it all out now using the keyboard. I can revert back to the ink mode as well, if I so chose. So one of the first three things, if this is your first time logging in, uh, your settings should save uh, after, you, after you do them, at least on the account you're logged into. But the first thing I like to do, especially if you're going to use a pen, is go to the hamburger menu in the top right, the settings menu, and make sure that active pen is toggled, ink to shape is toggled, and ink to table is uh, toggled as well. So what that means is active pen, I, I'm going to use my, my pen now just to kind of uh, demonstrate it. I and, and if you're not using pen, that's OK. In order to begin using whiteboard, you have to select or click one of the, the pencils at the bottom here, right? So whether the green or the blue pen or anything. So there a little dot pops up when it's selected. And if I click it again, then I get a few more settings. So I can increase the, the stroke a bit. I can change the color of the pen from here or anything like that. So right from there, 
Uh, I also have an eraser on the back of my pen, so I can just actually switch the pen around and erase it. But if you don't have an active pen, you have the eraser tab at the bottom, whoops, uh, at the bottom as well right here. So let's select uh, the black pen and I'm just gonna write something out. Um, apologies for the rough penmanship. I'm writing on a clamshell laptop while still maintaining camera eye contact. So we've got a pretty rough, uh, you know, rough piece of writing there. But what's cool is we can make it better. So for those that aren't using a pen, there is something called a lasso effect. And we can see that at the bottom here, right? Where this little rope right beside the ruler, there's like this little rope in a, in a circle. So if you're just uh, if you're doing that, you can use the lasso to select a large amount of items. But if you're using a pen, you can use the lasso to go ahead and encircle what you wrote, and then a, meting, uh, a setting or a menu, sorry, shows up. So we can delete that. We can cut it out, copy it. Uh, you know, we can change the ink from here. But I'm gonna go ahead and I like to call it beautify, but uh, it's their ink beautification. And it converts my penmanship into something that's actually legible now. And so it's super great because everyone can go ahead and now select it. You can move it around and be able to change that. If there's still a mistake, you know, I can edit out uh, some of those and then, you know, we're good to go. So that's kind of how you can use some of the penmanship there. Another thing, some of the features that, that we touched on, we touched on ink to shape and ink to table. So if for whatever reason you need to draw a certain shape, right, I'm gonna do a triangle here, it auto corrects that shape of what I did into kind of like a perfect triangle. Uh, if I wanna do a square, there we go. Circle is always the hardest because you'll never have a perfect circle. Actually, that one kind of worked out, but usually ends up being like a, uh, an oval or anything. Now I'm gonna go ahead, I can't erase this now because it's an item, so I need to delete that. But I'm gonna go ahead and keep the square because now if I take my pen and draw it down the middle of it, uh, you know what, it won't work for that. So I'm gonna redo it again. So if I go ahead and make the square and draw it down the middle of it, I can now create a table quickly. And so in just a jiffy, I was able to create a table. If I begin writing in it, it will actually keep on moving the table on its own to accommodate the space that I need to write. So it will automatically adapt to the penmanship that I'm trying to input on here, which is super cool. And then once I get rid of that text, it reverts back. So those are kind of some of the, the penmanship uh, and, and you know pen features that you can use if you had one. If not, then there's uh, some really great stuff that we can still kind of go over. So we can add a text anywhere. And when we say whiteboard, whiteboard, just exactly like OneNote, is it's forever. You can go in any direction so that you're not essentially cluttered by your ability to um, express different um, different ideas or the way that you want to input something. So if I add a text, I can click this capital A at the bottom. It adds the text over here, and then you know I can go ahead and start typing whatever I want. Intuitive if that's even spelled correctly. I can select that and I can move it around anywhere. So, uh, you know, I can do that. And if we're collaborating with somebody, if somebody wrote a suggestion or an idea or any note, I can actually select that and just give them a little thumbs up saying that I agree with them. It's a, it, it's a cool little way to see um, who's interacting with the classroom. Moving down the, the panel, right, we have a sticky note. So we can add sticky notes anywhere, exact same kind of format. I can click and drag this if I so chose. And if I go ahead and type in again, uh, any kind of word sticky note here, I can go ahead and now select that and the same options come up. So if I wanted to change the background of that sticky note, the color, I can go ahead and do that. Uh, again, give a little thumbs up or continue to edit or copy it. There's also some really great accessibility features that's built in here. So if there's any text in anything that you are um, you know, writing, we have Immersive Reader built in, which uh, I'll, I'll open it. I won't kind of walk through it just because it takes a while to walk through this feature. 
but it's great for individuals who may have, uh, you know, a reading or, or learning disability to be able to kind of jump through this menu and read it with all this built in feature, right, and read it back out in a in a English or the language of their choice. But moving back out, we can also add alternative text. So what we're doing here is if there is anybody that on our team or any student that's using a screen reader, they may be visually impaired or they need a screen reader to help them navigate through. Screen readers can't read pictures and they need alternative text in order to help read out what an image is showing. So if we're adding in a picture, we can just click alt text and then give the description of what this item is. Speaking of pictures, that's the next kind of item. So I can insert anything from uh, you know, my library, my, my PC library. I can take a picture from my computer, my PC, if I so wanted to. I'm going to go ahead and do Bing image because I want to I want to show something really cool. I, I apologize. This isn't really admin related. This is more science related, but I'm going to go ahead and type in heart diagram. And there's a specific image that I want. It is this one right here. So you can select any image, you can click the plus sign and boom, it's in imported in here. And we can go ahead, select that and we can move it around. Now, let's say I wanted to make material to either test or, you know, uh, give credit where credit is due, obviously, but maybe I don't want these words here, right? What we can do with any photo is bring out the inking of that photo. So in something like this, that's basically already inked, it's easy. So I click on this wand. It's going to do a little green box around. And now what I can do, there was a slight change. It, lo it looks a little bit more, more um, you know, colored now. I'm going to grab my pen again and actually start erasing the words from that picture. So I'm able to now kind of adapt or if I wanted to make like a like some sort of like test bow material or anything like that, uh, I'm able to start editing a picture that I brought in. Again, it, it works best if it's just a simple diagram with lines and things like that. If uh, if you bring in like an actual photo of you know someone's face, it will just be a big thing of, of ink colors. So there's that to be to be mindful for. But that is a, a really great feature that that can be leveraged within Whiteboard uh, as well. And on to kind of the last few features here, there is this plus icon. And this insert menu, when I click it, allows us to do a whole ton of things. So we won't go over, over every item, but let's, let's uh, go ahead and try this template, right? So if I click on that template, there is a ton of different topics that I can look at. So if I want to do like a meeting template, maybe a project planning template, anything like that, a planner, we can go ahead and import that. But I'm going to go ahead and click brainstorming. And immediately what it kind of does is that it creates this template and brings it into here so that I can start either working on it myself or collaborating with under with others. So I can select in here. I, I have to go ahead and click the pencil to, to edit that region. Just give me a second here just because it's getting a little difficult with the pop up but maybe tips and tricks. So if I was planning for today's session, uh, the agenda, I can go ahead and start editing that was tips and tricks. Item two was whiteboard. And I can start filling this in. As somebody who might be collaborating, we can always give a little thumbs up aside to see maybe we covered that. We're just about wrapping up with whiteboard. So I can go ahead and uh, click that as well. As, as completed. Another way is, again, we can, if we have or want different ideas for different team members or groups, maybe we can, you know, set that as these two are, I have to put in ideas, right? Maybe if I was working with Chris and I wanted Chris to put in some ideas of his own, I can be like, hey, go to either the top two right ones or on, on the green ones. And I know that Chris's colors are kind of there so that we're, we're generating creative spaces that are you know, best for some learning uh, strategies. So that's how we can actually bring in a, a workable template and an editable template directly into OneNote and then continue to customize from there. 
Uh, I'm actually just going to keep on moving over to the side here just to demonstrate the, the whole whiteboard capability of continuously moving along. Going back to the insert menu, we can also uh, notify here. Well, you have stickers if you want to be a little bit fun. You know, you can uh, go ahead and put something really cool. Why not? Right. So if you want to kind of get a little reassurance or things like that, we can put in a sticker just for fun. But more importantly, we can put in actual documents. So we can put in PDFs, Word documents, or PowerPoint documents even, and have that incorporated there. So again, for anybody that might be following along or wants to kind of uh, switch task and multitask like that, then let's go ahead and click uh, this PDF over here. It will open up your PC documents. I'm just going to click a, a text here, and it will display. So if you had multiple pages in your Word or PDF, they would arrange in, in a nice fashion. But otherwise, we select either one page or all of them, and then we're going to insert it. So now I can insert this page as like a reference point and be able to start annotating or sticky noting or anything like that on the right hand side. If we're collaborating, though, it's pretty easy if you know someone comes in and starts editing over that, right? Or or maybe they wanted to edit the actual um, you know ink grab and then everything is not text anymore, but just and a picture, we can actually lock that, that image right here. So if I select this and click that lock background, what that means is that I can't interact with this, um, with this particular piece of PDF and it, I can still write over it and stuff, but it won't actually change the, the, the principle, the fundamental document behind it. So if you know, we are working in a group or collaborative setting and that is something to be mindful for, then, you know, we do want to be able to, to do that. OK, so for for some reason, uh, my mouse is getting hidden actually in whiteboard, but that was the last uh, the last feature I wanted to share with all of you with whiteboard. So there's a realm of possibilities and opportunities that we can leverage using uh, the whiteboard app. And uh, it, it's pretty great in order to boost that kind of productivity and collaboration. OK, uh, I'm going to now go back to the slide deck where just what we're going to do is uh, start wrapping up. But I wanted to show you about the uh, the code that we're able to do for today. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, let's go ahead and switch that. So as I mentioned earlier today, uh, we would be more than happy to give you some recognition for the work that you did. Right. So for the training that you um, that you've taken today, we can redeem this on in the Microsoft Educator Center. So maybe I'll leave it up for a little bit if we wanted to take this code down and uh, give some time as well, um, you know, for, for Chris to potentially put it in the chat as well. But what we can do is we can redeem this code on education.microsoft.com. And I'll show that in just a second what that is. But most importantly, this place, the, the EDU Center, the MEC as we like to call it, it's a place where you can continue to expand your learning and also get recognition for uh, codes, essentially, for, and badges for the work that you do. So really great if uh, you need to complete, you know, your ALP uh, courses or credits, right? Or you want to showcase to um, to anybody that you're you're kind of working on your own time and you are upskilling and expanding your learning. And the reason why this is great is because you can take those accomplishments with you in the form of a transcript and leverage that as your kind of professional token. So I'm going to go ahead and actually just op uh, or go back to my opened uh, web page over here. And I'm just going to open up a new tab and we're going to type in education.microsoft.com. If you've never been here before or signed into this before, I'll walk that through just so we kind of have an idea of what it is that we're looking out for. But you know, right from the get go, we can dive in and see what's actually available here. But uh, we're going to click the sign in at the top right. And if you've never made an account before, it'll prompt you to create an account. My personal recommendation is to use a personal account. And the reason for that is because if you do end up moving along or you know, getting promoted or going to a different district or anything like that, then you can take those accomplishments with you. You don't want to be in a situation or a spot where everything you've done was locked behind a now inaccessible uh, email. 
So that's kind of my recommendation is to use a personal account when creating this and then be able to go ahead and uh, type that in. So essentially what would happen is you go to your profile icon once your uh, account is created. You can, oh, we'll, we'll go to the My Profile in just a second, but all you do is go to Redeem Achievement Code. You'd put in the T, you know, whatever the, the code is and click Redeem. And then it gets added to your uh, to your accomplishments. So you can see that in the top right-hand corner, we're gonna click on My Profile. And these are all kind of the, the badges that you can accumulate. So this is what I've done in the past kind of three or four years over time. And I can, again, redeem my code here because there's always multiple ways to achieve that. And lastly, here's where I can view my transcript. So by viewing that transcript, I'm able to open it up and have kind of, you know, uh, how long it took, the description of the badge I, I accomplished, and uh, the actual, you know, class and when I achieved it as well. So this is, again, really great way for you to kind of... Uh, not prove your learning, but uh, definitely get that proper recognition you deserve for going ahead and achieving all of that. So with that being said, uh, we do have, or you know, in the deck, there is a couple of different uh, courses and resources inside of the, of the mech that you can definitely go ahead and leverage on your own time as well. It'll cover some of the stuff we did. Uh, it might expose uh, a, a few other ideas as well. And, you know, this is some additional resources. So I, I included a link for some of the touchpad gestures on a trackpad if you're using a laptop or portable device. There is a new version of Whiteboard coming out. If you're actually in the Whiteboard app, it tells you in the settings that there's a new version, but that's a link for there. And if you did need any assistance inside of your Windows, um, you know, uh, desktop or anything like that, we can go ahead and do that from this link. So ultimately, thank you everybody for joining us today. I, we would appreciate some feedback and you know, how was the session? How can we adapt and tailor it to you? Um, was it at a good time today? Or just any, anything that, that you can provide back to us. It takes two minutes and we'd greatly appreciate that. So you can do that in our feedback form. And if you have any questions, right? Sometimes, uh, you know, Chris asked some great questions today that I didn't even know, but we were able to figure out um, but if, if you can't figure it out or you need that additional support, email us at the help at cobblestonecollective.ca. We have a team of educators working behind the scenes and generally you can get a pretty quick response time um, in order to, to get some more assistance there. So I definitely recommend uh, being able to do that. And if you can take that two minutes for the feedback, that'd be phenomenal. Uh, we are wrapping up, I think, uh, the rest of the admin professional series this week. So definitely check out those courses. But that's it from me. So if you have any questions, uh, let us know. Damien, that was awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, I learned a load, a uh, lot of stuff there too. I've been playing around while you've been, uh, while you've been talking. Um, <laughs> I have one little question for you though. How did you get the temperature show up next to your weather icon in your taskbar? Oh man, uh, I think it prompted me actually. Um, uh, like when you figure that one out, I want to know that one too. That, that, I like that too. Like, yeah, it tells you it's 19 degrees, but when I do it, it gives me like the entire weather forecast on my taskbar. So, so yeah, yeah, like I can open it and and I I'll, I'll figure that out. Uh, yeah, let let me know. <laughs> There's some good yeah, stuff I, in here. Like I started <laughs> like as you I really started digging through some things, and I'm like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I do not remember actually how uh, how I did that. I feel it was a prompt, but I could be wrong. So I'll, I'll definitely try to get back to you on that. But <laughs> that's awesome. Um, Patricia, you asked about reusing that, about uh, how you can transfer that code from a, uh, like from a work email to a personal one. Um, I've reached out, actually, I've just asked um, if there's a way to to do that. Um, I have a suspicion, um, but if you send us uh, send us an email, then uh, I will confirm my suspicion one way or the other with you. So hopefully we'll be able to we'll be able to help you out. Um, the, I know I I had an issue with uh, the Minecraft one, and the Microsoft team just copied it across for me. I don't know I don't know how they did that, but there's probably some back end system in there. <laughs> Yeah, there, there's always there's always someone that can take a look at one point or another. So hopefully that helps. But if you also have the code like today, 
and you put it in on your work account, that code can still work on your personal, so you can try that, I think. But, uh, but yeah, but definitely give us an email. So uh, if you didn't already fill out that evaluation, uh, that would be that would be awesome if you could do that. If you've got any any questions, feel free to type those in the chat, unmute, let us know what it is that you need to know. Um, otherwise, we hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Um, the thunderstorms have gone away and the sun came out, so. <laughs> they, they've cleared Montreal, which means everyone else is good now, right? Yeah, so. <laughs> everybody's good. They're, they're, they're off to like the Maritimes, so unless you're in the Maritimes, you, you're good to go. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you everyone for joining. If you did have a question, we'll be on here for a few more minutes. But if not, day is yours, and uh, we look forward to to hopefully seeing you around. Um. Yeah. So um, you can use that code in more than one account. So that was my. So Patricia, if you're still here, that was what I was going to suggest. So go ahead and take that code and put it in your personal account, and it will apply the same credits. And if you have, if you remember the codes from yesterday's session, um, <laughs> then you can use that one too to get the credit for those. Or, or if you don't remember, send us an email. We can find out those codes, right? The, for the from the trainers. Awesome. Well, if there's no questions, have a great day. Um, enjoy.